live from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 5 p.m. Our top story today, a violent and deadly crash in the San Fernando Valley. A speeding car slammed into parked cars, killing one. And right now, detectives are taking a close look at that security video for clues. Yeah, the graphic scene happened on Sherman Way near Hollywood Burbank Airport. That was early this morning. And CBS 2's Lisa Siegel is live in Panorama City, where detectives gave her new information in this case. Lisa? Absolutely. I just spoke to the captain. Right now, he tells me they are working on leads to find the driver who fled the scene of this deadly collision. From this security video, you can see the horrific crash that left a young man dead. It happened on the 1100 block of Sherman Way in Sun Valley. Uh, just a sad, sad, uh, tragic scene. Eddie Soto woke up to the news and realized it happened right outside the auto body shop he manages and that his cameras had captured it all. The car going through the impact, you know, spinning around, impacting the rest of the vehicles. Uh, seeing the body coming out of the vehicle, you know, it, it's sad. Police say the crash occurred at 3.30 this morning when a man driving this 2007 Nissan with two other people inside collided with several parked cars in a light pole. A 23-year-old man was ejected from the car and died at the scene. He has now been identified as Juan Alberto Torres of Sun Valley. A woman in her early 20s was also severely injured and taken to the hospital. The driver fled the scene as neighbors rushed to help and called 911. Eddie Soto still can't believe the driver would walk away, leaving so much tragedy behind. It's just unbelievable that a human being can actually uh, do something like that and walk away and feel that at peace by themselves, you know. Now, if you have any information on this crash, the LAPD would like to hear from you. Back to you. The final chapter today in the case of eight-year-old Gabriel Fernandez, tortured to death by his mother and her boyfriend. The couple was finally sentenced five years after the boy's death. CBS 2's Amy Johnson is live outside the courthouse in downtown L.A. with the judge's harsh words for them today. Amy. Pat, the judge told that couple that he hopes that they wake up at night and are tortured by thoughts of what they've done to this young boy. This is a case that has really touched so many because of the sheer brutality of the torture and abuse of this young boy by the two people who should have been taking care of him. The conduct was horrendous and humane and nothing short of evil. After calling this the worst case of abuse he has seen in his 20 years on the bench, Judge George Lamelli sentenced Isaro Aguirre to death for torturing and murdering eight-year-old Gabriel Fernandez. His girlfriend, the boy's mother, Pearl Fernandez, received life in prison for her role. It is unimaginable the pain that this child probably endured. Gabriel had a cracked skull, broken ribs, burns, and BB pellets lodged in his body. Aguirre didn't speak in court, and neither did the boy's biological father, who is in custody on an unrelated charge. But he said he wanted to listen to the sentencing and to the other family members who spoke at the hearing. Gabriel had unconditional love for you, and you took advantage of that, knowing he will never turn you in. But Gabriel's teacher, Jennifer Garcia, did report the abuse to a hotline. However, social workers left Gabriel in the home where he was tortured and starved and eventually beaten to death by Aguirre and Fernandez. I know I'm not alone in hoping that they experience the same abuse in their lifetime and worse. They are evil people for what they did. She described Gabriel as a kind and helpful boy. She no longer uses his student number. I don't assign number 28 to another student because I feel that it's only his number now. And it's a way for me to honor him in my classroom. Five years after the young boy's death, justice. I'm just doing my job. That's it. Deputy DA John Hatami, a father of two young children, was emotional. I think Gabriel's affected everybody, including me. Many of the family members in court today wore T-shirts with a little boy's picture on the front that said, Justice for Gabriel on the back. They read, It's not over. Trials are now planned for the social workers and their supervisor. I'll send it back to you in the studio.
Amy, thank you. A man on a bicycle was hit and seriously injured by a trash truck this afternoon in Garden Grove. Sky 2 over the scene along Magnolia near Imperial. Magnolia was closed, we're told, in both directions for the investigation. We're told the bicyclist was taken to UCI. Breaking news now. Detectives in Las Vegas say this is the man who stabbed two tourists to death last Friday on the Strip. 31-year-old Julius Trotter was arrested yesterday in L.A. Police tell us the bodies of the victims were found inside a room at the Circus Circus Hotel. Detectives say Trotter broke into their room, burglarized it, and then killed the two. The sex scandal involving a former USC campus gynecologist is growing today. Now, seven more lawsuits filed against USC and Dr. George Tyndall. He's accused of inappropriately touching students and other acts of sexual assault. Tyndall worked at the USC Student Health Center for nearly 30 years. The plaintiffs also claim the university knew about it and then covered up what Tyndall did. There are now a total of 20 lawsuits. Developing news now, a possible breakthrough in the battle to keep young immigrants called dreamers in the U.S. Republican Congressman Jeff Denham of Modesto says a group of GOP moderates has made a tentative deal with conservative colleagues. Details are still being finalized, but the proposal would allow dreamers to get an eight-year visa, but no word on what happens after that. Also part of the negotiations, $25 billion to build President Trump's border wall. Well, in five days, history will be made in Singapore. Now, that's where President Trump will meet with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to talk about denuclearization and economic sanctions. Now, CBS2 political reporter Dave Bryan is here now with a run-up to the June 12th meeting and how the president is now preparing for that day. Yeah, and you wonder, will this just be kind of a meet-and-greet, glorified, right. or whether there will be something more substantive like denuclearization? Well, Mr. Trump said today he doesn't have much preparing to do because he's ready. His secretary of state backs that up, saying, months of briefings have given the president all the information that he needs. Today, Mr. Trump met with Japan's prime minister to not only go over next week's summit, but also to discuss some issues Japan has with the U.S., like tariffs. President Trump and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe say they're in agreement. North Korea must end its nuclear program. Japan and U.S. should closely cooperate with each other so that we will be able to see great success for the historic uh, U.S.-North Korea summit. The two met at the Oval Office ahead of next week's summit in Singapore. Japan has concerns about North Korea not living up to any deal President Trump may strike during the meeting. But President Trump says he's ready. I think I'm very well prepared. I don't think I have to prepare very much. It's about uh, attitude. It's about uh, willingness to get things done. With just five days to go until the summit, the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, raised eyebrows in Israel when he said this about Kim. Well, Kim Jong-un got back on his hands and knees and begged for it which is exactly the position you want to put him in. Today, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo fired back at that comment. I, I know Rudy, uh, Rudy, Rudy doesn't speak for the administration when it comes to uh, this negotiation and this set of issues. Back at the White House, Mr. Trump and Mr. Abe are also talking trade, where despite their close personal relationship, the two men do not see eye to eye. Japan is the only major U.S. ally that did not get an exemption from President Trump's tariffs on steel and aluminum. And the Trump administration announced at the end of May it will investigate foreign auto imports to see if they threaten national security. Obviously, we buy a lot of things from Japan, particular automobiles. We'll have to talk about that. Now, before heading to Singapore, President Trump will stop off in Canada tomorrow, where he'll face some angry U.S. allies at a G7 meeting. The anger is all about Mr. Trump's order to impose trade tariffs and stalled attempts to renegotiate a new North American trade agreement. And it could get pretty testy before he heads to the North Korea summit. Pat, back to you. All right, thanks for that, Dave. Well, today is the first full day of freedom for a 63-year-old grandmother whose life sentence for, was commuted by President Trump. This was Alice Johnson yesterday after being let out of an Alabama prison. The last week, reality TV star Kim Kardashian went to the White House to plead with the president about her case. On CBS This Morning, Johnson said she is grateful to the president and to Kardashian. I would tell President Trump, thank you so much that I am going to be that one that is going to make you so proud. President Trump tweeted today, good luck, Alice Johnson. Have a wonderful life.
Former San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick wants to subpoena President Trump and Vice President Pence in his lawsuit against the NFL. His kneeling during the national anthem sparked protests on both sides of the issue, leading the league to impose a ban. Kaepernick's lawyers want the president's and vice president's testimony to prove league owners colluded to blackball the free agent. Both the president and Mr. Pence criticize players kneeling during the anthem. Well, we do have some breaking news at this hour. Facebook just admitted as many as 14 million of its users' private posts were exposed to the public for as long as 10 days. This occurred, we're told, last month. Executive, executives blame it on a glitch that they say has since been fixed. Now, Facebook has been plagued with privacy problems since recent revelations of data sharing with political firm Cambridge Analytica and its deals with Chinese companies. More breaking news at this hour. Pursuit has ended in a crash in East L.A. And Stu Mandel is live in Sky 2 with more on this. Stu. Pat, Jeff, that vehicle you see right there, the red one, that was the stolen vehicle. There was a pursuit. California Highway Patrol chasing that car. Came to an end, like you said, minor crash here at Soto and Marengo. Now, one of the suspects inside that vehicle went into custody. Another one ran from the scene, still at large. We understand that that person may have gotten into another vehicle and drove away. California Highway Patrol, they're handling the situation. Live in Sky 2 over Boyle Heights. I'm Stu Mandel. Back to you two in the studio. All right. Thanks for that, Stu. Now, are you prepared for retirement? Well, the new warning about the future of Social Security and how much cash you'll need on your hands for those golden years. <laughs> Plus, a graduation sash controversy. Why a local student who wants to wear his military future with pride was told no. Also, stunning images out of Hawaii of a river of lava. The latest from the Big Island is hundreds of additional homes destroyed and and coming up after the break, hear from a man who is in the right place at exactly the right time when he had a medical emergency inside this store. Hey, everybody. I'm Garth Kemp. What a day today. Can we duplicate it tomorrow? What's the weekend look like? We'll show you coming up.